Hello everyone, you are welcome to the ninth episode of the Manual Reinforced Concrete Design using the RCC Design Excel Spreadsheet. I am Ridwan Ibrahim and in this episode, I will be demonstrating to you how you can design a foundation and the type of foundation I'm talking about is a pad footing, okay? So I will be demonstrating two types of pad footing. I will be demonstrating the single pad footing and the combined pad footing all right so for the combined pad footing you have two um column points then the column you are combining them with just one footing okay so for that case we'll be using rcc 81 okay so you can check um your you can check the list of spreadsheets that you have so if you look at rcc 81 you see we have the foundation okay it is the only one there is no table version and the actual version is just one okay so we do the analysis and design of the foundation so um let's just um go ahead all right so um for the fcu that is the concrete grid so i'll put um 35 over there all right and then um the fy that's the strength of the steel i will use 460 and then the density of concrete okay i will use 24 for normal width concrete and here the bearing pressure what you usually call the soil bearing capacity okay so i have 200 let me just use 200 okay then the maximum aggregate size 20 okay cover um, cover of 50 is fine then the unit width of soil that is 18 kilometers per meter square that's the standard then this is the standard this is also the standard so i will leave that as it is now you see this is asking me for the dimension of the base actually it is the design that is meant to tell me the dimension of the base not me I'm not supposed to fill this, okay? So, but you have no choice. You still have to fix it. So, but I'll tell you how you will arrive at the actual um, actual dimension. So, you will not be doing a try and error, okay? So, it's not a, uh, a process of using try and error. So, let's put the column uh, dimension. So, um, you can put the depth of the footing. So, let's use the depth of, um, let's say, 350, okay? of 350 then the column section so let's use um, a column section of um, 300 by 300 so a 300 by 300 column okay so the eccentricity i'll put it at zero and the eccentricity i'll put it at zero so now let's put the axial load of the column okay so let's assume that the axial load of the column is um 800 okay for the dead load and then for the imposed load which is the live load let's use um something like 200 so that everything we had up to be 1000 okay don't forget that whenever we want to size our footing we use the limit state of serviceability we don't use the ultimate limit state so what i'm saying is that your load combination will be 1.0 gk plus 1.0 qk it will not be 1.4 gk plus 1.6 qk this time around because we're in the foundation you don't have to factor anything all the loads have been factored from the superstructure and the load is just directly passing down to the foundation so there's nothing to factor anymore okay so um in this case the actual load which is the design load will just be 800 plus 200 and that will be 1000 you don't need to multiply 1.4 with this and then multiply 1.6 with this you just need to multiply 1.0 to this 1.0 to this and that's like the actual value itself okay so um in order to get the the base area you know don't forget that pressure our pressure was our pressure this is the bearing pressure which is the bearing capacity that's 200 kilonewton per meter squared and then we also have the load so we can easily determine the area don't forget that pressure equals to force over area okay so to get area we need the area that is the area of this part we need the area what is the surface area of this part so i want to know the length i want to know the breadth so i want to know the area okay so um to determine the area the area will just be force over area so what's my force my force is basically 1000 if you had 800 plus 200 that would give you 1000 and what's my area 200 so 800 plus 200 is 1000 so 1000 divided by 200 i will have five so it means my area is five meters squared okay five meters squared so if you have an area of five meters squared so how are you going to split that okay so if you find the square root of five what is the square root of five uh, let me say five and then um square root sorry five 
square root so that's 2.23 okay so if you use 2.25 so i can easily say 2.25 by 2.25 that should be the dimension of my footing so here i can just write 2250 by 2250 i think you understand that so that is just the simple mathematics you need to do over there since you know your force this is your force and then you know your bearing pressure you can easily determine the area and from the area you can decide to know what your length will be and what your breadth will be but you do not really need to disturb yourself too much because this template was developed by professionals so they've actually um created a a suggestion for you over here Okay, so if you check here, you see a suggestion. So they've suggested to you that, okay, if you want to use a square column, you can actually use 2330 by 2310. You see, 2310 by 2310. And from the calculation, you see that what we have is 2.230. Okay, 2.230. So, and they say you should use what? And they say you should use what? 2.3. So it is almost the same thing. So they just put some, you know, um, they just add some little things to it. So this is the suggestion they've given to you. And if you want to use a rectangular um, surface, you can use 33 by 460. So at the end of the day, when you multiply this, you will still arrive at what? At 5. 5 meters squared. Okay? Something approximately 5 meters squared. So they've put a suggestion here for you. So you do not actually need to stress yourself too much. So in this case, you can just put 2310, 2310. I mean here, you can just put 2310. And then what? two three ten okay you see so easily you fix that so you can use this or you can use two three ten by two zero seven five so you can use two three ten by two zero seven five so that's fine but i do not wish to use any of this i wish to use what i have here which is two point two five so i'll use two two fifty so here i'll use two two fifty by two two fifty so even if you've done your own calculation, you can decide to, you know, ignore their own suggestion. But at the end of the day, what you get mathematically will be almost the same to what will be their own suggestion. Because you both use the same formula. They just added a little bit of, you know, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that is how you are going to arrive at that. You can see that is very easy. So even if you don't know how to calculate it, you can always check what they've suggested for you and then you use what they've suggested or you just even increase more than what they suggested. So this is how you size your part footing. Okay, so after doing all that, then easily you can determine what your um what your status is. So you can see here my status fail. It says it fails on GBP, which is what the ground bearing pressure. Okay. So the ground bearing pressure fails. So since it fails by ground bearing pressure, that means the pressure of this is not enough. You know, the pressure cannot be distributed over this area. Okay, so what I'll just do is I will try to increase this area. Okay, so basically I'm forced to use their own suggestion, but I will still not succumb to their suggestion. I would rather use something higher. Okay, so I'll use 2,500, okay, by 2,500, okay. So by now it should not be failing by ground pressure okay because it is now the pressure is now being distributed over a larger area so let's see the status it says it fails again but this time around is not failing by ground pressure it is failing by punching okay so because it's failing by punching that tells me that i should just increase my depth the thickness of the foot in itself so 350 let me just use um 450 okay so now i'm having a valid design so my design is now passing so we are good all right so um from there you can just go ahead and you know, check your reinforcement so um I, the reinforcement that is provided here is ht20 at the spacing of 275 okay and then you can see provide ht20 at the spacing of this okay and then this is bottom two this is bottom one you know they are both bottom so one will be going the other direction while this will be going the um this other direction so also for the punching it has checked everything so that is very um accurate i believe so this is how you design um a, a part footing which is a single part footing isolated pipe footing so what if it is um a combined footing it is still this um it is still this template that you use you just come to the double over here so you come to double so you have everything here so in double basically you can just change your bearing pressure so what do you have for your bearing pressure i'll use the same thing that i have over here which is um 200 okay so i'll use um 200 for my bearing pressure and then for column one you are going to tell us what's the dead load and what's the imposed load and even if you have wind load i do not have wind load i will just clear that okay so i do not have wind load 
and then the moments the moments in the y the moments let me clear all this actually okay so now what is my age load in this case let's see that my age load in this case is um 300 you know i have two columns don't forget so i have two columns you can see it over here so you can also see it over here. i have two columns but you can see how far how they are placed um I, actually i want them to be on the same line so i'll fix that don't worry so i have 300 as the dead load and i have two so here let's say i have some like 400 and here i have some like um 250 so that's the dead load and the imposed load okay okay so now let's fix the dimension so um the the base okay so the base is three thousand by three thousand that's the surface area so that's the base okay that's three thousand but at the same time you can always check the what's it called the the suggestion the suggestion will be here so what's the suggestion the suggestion says i should use four two seven five by this okay but if i want to use rectangular i can use three thousand by two thousand so let's use um three thousand by I, I think I should be able to use let's see two five by two five or two seven by two seven. Two seven by two seven. Okay. So two seven by two seven is is still valid, okay? So uh the depth, let's use a depth of um four fifty. Okay. So it is um fine, but it's telling me there is a warning when there is centricity, okay. So um, now I have to fix the eccentricity. Actually, you can see there's one column here, there's another column here, but I want the two to be on the same side, okay? So the eccentricity in the X, okay, I will let that be 1,200. So that will be the spacing between them, okay? So you see how far they are spaced. And the eccentricity in the Y, I'll just put zero over there, okay? So now you see that the two of them are now on the same line. So if you have your column like this, yeah, it's fine. So the distance, the center to center distance will just be 1,200, okay? So um, this is what I have designed for. So if you have it like this, fine. So this, just make sure you change this eccentricity to make sure your column is well placed, okay? So and if that is done, you've, you know, you've done the dimensioning and then you've done the column and also you've placed all the material function. Then you just need to check if your design is valid, okay? So if it is valid, then fine. Then the same way we did the earlier, where you just check your reinforcement, what should be there. So provide 4 T12 at spacing of this, 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 blah, 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 blah. And then you check your result, then you are good to go. So this is how you can design a part footing, an isolated part footing, and a combined part footing using RCC 81 of the of this um template so if you like this video make sure you give it a like and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel yet kindly consider giving me a subscription thank you for watching